two, we are back for the attack on the, oh, I'm sorry, I'm having a long day, guys. I'm forgetting on the Flash Comics. I've been working on an appeal all day. I don't want to get away from what I'm doing here with the books, but my mind is a little jelly right now. So, what do we have here? Last upload, we were using my pump sprayer and trying to remove the tanning and staining off of the interior page, first page of the Flash Comics. I changed the paper towels many, many times, and it's brown, this paper towel, light brown. It's not a popping out brown, but the pre-cleaning method that I showed, or the pre-aqueous bath method that I showed in the last upload, definitely works. And I hope this is coming out on this paper towel. It's not white. And if I smell it, it smells, I don't know if I'm going to get some criticism. I, I smell the old paper. I like to equate it with smelling acidic. Whether that's true or not, I'm sure there'll be some people out there will say, what the hell, how do you know what acid smells like? I do know what acid tastes like when I was younger. But other than that... This is just what I am saying. Okay, so what are we going to do? What we're going to do is let's take a look at it and see if it did lighten up a little. And you have to understand, sometimes it's hard to really gauge whether it lightened up when it's wet. But I can see the difference. So what we're going to do is we're going to get this ready for a nice aqueous bath. Nothing wrong with putting some of the solution back on it, which is water, soap, and some hydrogen peroxide. So let's put this behind me, and let's get my tub ready for the aqueous bath. And you have to remember, when I do this, I rinse the heck out of it between applications. It's very important, guys. Rinse, rinse, rinse. I think by rinsing out what you put in, you get the best results. So right here we have a pitcher and it's a little over three liters of water, um, a little shy of a gallon. This is a gallon right here. If, if I filled it up to about right here, that's a gallon. So I have my pitcher. And what I want to do is I want to get my solution ready for the aqueous bath. Again, good old palm olive. It has to be antibacterial. And the reason why I know this is if you use non-antibacterial, if you ever use it for your sponges when you do dishes, it gets a smell of bacteria. That's a smelly sponge. You don't want that for your comics. So what we're going to do, one, two, three... That's a good little ring. One, two, three. I put one, two, three drops or one, two, three pour of soap into my solution. You know what? I want to put a little bit more because I don't like the bubbles. We want to put a little bit more of the soap bubbles. So there you go. So we have the soap. And I'm going to put a little hydrogen peroxide in it as well. One, two, three. Why not? And then what we do, and again, hopefully I don't get criticism for doing this, because maybe it would do a chemist out there. I know a lot of chemists like to watch me and say, that's not right what you're doing. I'm going to put a little bit of chloramine tea into the mix. Why not? Let's have a little party with that too so we can lighten up the pages a little bit better. Now when I do the covers with chloramine tea, I do a real hefty, hefty tablespoon. When I do the interior pages, I do probably, I would say about a gram of the chloramine tea, just like that. That looks about 
two grams actually and I don't know why I know what grams look like with white powder but I'm only kidding so we're gonna add about this much into the water and it's warm water directly from my tap I do have a filtered system in my house I don't use special water or purified water because I would go broke if I had to use that water or distilled water. My water is pretty good up in New York on Long Island. I tested it a few times at a local pool store, Leslie's. They tested for me and the readings I don't know offhand, but they were pretty good when I got it done. So I'm happy with the water here. I know it down south, like if you are where Mike Night Tiger lives in Florida, I would not use any water from Florida to clean comics because I have experience with Florida water because I used to go there quite often, I still do. And it's just not the quality of water that you have at least where I live. So what we have is that we will take the pitcher off, or we'll out of the tub. I am going to put my actual first wrap. We'll put it down. Sometimes I use two grates, sometimes I use one. So we'll, we'll put two grates, why not? It's just, it just makes it easier to remove the document for rinsing. And then all I slowly do is I pour the actual gallon of water with what I put in, the hydrogen peroxide, the chloramine tea, and the soap. And we'll just pour it in and we'll let the document soak in this solution. Sometimes I leave it in for three hours, sometimes a little bit more, give or take. But that's the general rule. So we'll get this in here, we'll let it soak. And then I like to agitate it all once in a while. And you'll see in about three hours, this will turn a slight tan because it's remo removing the impurities in the actual cover or first wrap of the book and i may soak it two three times this same process and between each process i rinse it out rinse it out i can't stress that any more i think i'm going to make t-shirts that say what you put in you must take out because i am a strong proponent for that i don't need to do tests or any experiments it's just what i feel and i speak to a few other people in the hobby and some of them as you know i speak to are one of the best guys out there um they also and i don't want to speak for them but they agree with the philosophy of what you put in you should take out just as long as you're not doing deacidification because when you add calcium hydroxide into the fibers, you want it to say, stay in the actual paper, as well as the methyl cellulose. When I put methyl cellulose in the solution, the methyl cellulose is actually absorbing into the fibers of the paper, hence making the paper stronger and deacidifying the paper as well with the calcium hydroxide. So that's it or this is the last segment we'll uh, come back we'll do another segment in this upload when i take it out and perhaps i'll show you the process where i try to absorb out the water with my paper towels maybe not maybe i'll just cut this right now this is long enough just to show you how i clean interior pages i've done it in the past Okay, guys, we are back, and this is going to be the last segment for this upload. And what we have here is the 
splash page of the Flash Comics, and it has been resting between my two pieces of glass. Now, what I did, just to give you some history, was that I did soak it for approximately three hours or so with the concoction solution of chloramine tea, some hydrogen peroxide, and palm olive. It's wet the glass, which is good. And I soaked it for about three hours. After soaking it for about three hours, what I did was I flushed the heck out of it. I can't stress that any more, any more than I do. So I flushed the cover with fresh water, and then I actually soaked it in just plain water without any additives for about another hour. So it's still wet, so it's gonna be very difficult to see the results, but I just wanna let you know that I can tell by looking at it, the stains are diminished somewhat. I'm gonna do the whole process again. And the important thing about this is it's not just doing it once, you can do it a few times and you gradually get it to the level that you want the paper to be at. So there's nothing wrong with doing it once, doing it twice, even doing it three times. And that's why I only put in a small amount of the additives or chemicals that I'm using, so I do not do it all at once. You just take your time. And I will do this for each page of the book. So when we're talking, I still see there's water stains right here. I'll hit it right now with the hydrogen peroxide. Just I'll give it a little brushing, because the main thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to start the whole process again and slow and steady lighten the page. My main goal is not to make this page white. I can do that. I can amp it up with chloramine tea and different methods, but it's just going to look unnatural because from a, a book from 1940 something is not going to be white. It's going to be very rare to have a white book from that age. So the main goal is just try to alleviate some of the stains, remove some of the watermarks, and we'll get there. And I, I will do that. But it's not going to be 100%. I just want to gradually make it a little bit better. So what I'll do is I'll hit it with my solution one more time. This is the second round that I'm doing it and we'll let it penetrate. And then I'll go through the whole steps again. So we'll put our Ramey paper on. I'll hit it so the Ramey paper has the solution in it. And then we'll just let the solution soak into the book. We have to get our glasses because it's very important, I feel, to have it where the book is always pressurized between two flat, or the page is pressurized between two flat surfaces in order to get it to remain flat. We'll also use the paper towel method in order to draw out stains that may be still left in the book to make the product better. So I'll put two paper towels. I'll put a second round of paper towels on top and then we will sandwich it between glass. Glass is very important, guys, if you're gonna be doing this. So I highly recommend that you go and you can get glass at thrift stores or secondhand stores there's a lot of cheap furniture out there that has glass pieces. These are all from furniture, used furniture that I, I'm a junk collector to a degree where, believe it or not, 
If I see garbage on the side of the road, a lot of it that people are throwing things out and something strikes my interest, I'll stop and I'll go through it because you know the old saying about people's trash and I get a lot of glass pieces that people just throw out in old furniture units. So keep your eyes out because glass is very important to do these types of procedures because with the glass you can see. So it, you can see through and you can see how things are moving and, and shaping along. So they're very important. So that's it for this upload. We'll let this penetrate, soak. I'll leave it in here probably for an hour. I'll hit it again with the solution. And then what I'll do is I'll soak it again. I, I may not soak it again in the chloramine T hydrogen peroxide palm olive solution, but I'll run water through it. And the main goal is I want to get those marks out on the top and I'll get them out. But you just have to be patient and you have to understand if there's one thing that I can give advice in relation to this right now is you have to be patient. You have to do it several times. It's not one and done. Several times in order to remove the stains if you want to do it correctly. And that's what I have to say about that. So thank you for watching. Next upload, we'll have the cover ready to get going. We'll start making the pulp and we'll start getting ready to leaf cast this first wrap and probably all the other wraps inside of the book. And I may do something different. I may do a few pages with the leaf casting without my leaf casting table. I want to show you that it could be done without the suction, without using the vacuum, and maybe by doing it that way step by step, more people will try to attempt it because you don't need everything that I use. You can do isolated leaf casting just on a piece of glass like this, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. So stay tuned.